the gospel of the Lord. This weekend brings back memories for me because May 1st in communism was the day that people celebrated work. And it was one of the only days that I could remember that my grandfather did not go to work. He would work seven days a week, 12, 14 hours many times proclaiming when my grandmother would go to church that work is my prayer. I have no need for church or prayer. And he would make fun of her for praying the rosary. He was brainwashed, indoctrinated, by godless, atheistic, communist ideology. And this weekend, the church gives us the feast of the sleeping Saint Joseph. Joseph who sleeps. You know, one of the best ways to lose weight is to get enough sleep. Americans are very sleep deprived. No wonder we have 70% of our population that is obese. We don't rest. The human being was not made for work, but made for God. And part of that is the need to rest. The Sabbath, something that is inviolable in the Bible, never to be violated. The need to rest. But the great example for me in my life, my grandmother, who is the best Bible I ever read, she became the Barnabas in the life of my grandfather. And in that, in my life as well. The first reading today tells us of Paul who was a great persecutor of the early church. His name was Saul before his conversion. And when he had his conversion, the Acts of the Apostles tells us he arrived in Jerusalem and he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. And then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Barnabas became Paul's sponsor. We have a baptism today part of the baptism liturgy, as in any of the sacraments of the church, is the need to have a sponsor. If you join any 12-step program, like AA or 
Narcotics Anonymous or, you know, Overeaters Anonymous. Yes, there is a group like that. Uh, any type of a group, G Gamblers Anonymous, whatever your issue, there's help out there for you. But what will happen as part of that is you will get a sponsor, an advocate. We call the Holy Spirit our advocate. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity, which is our God. And God for us as Christians isn't out there. God is real, incarnate, which means he takes shape in people. Barnabas became the incarnation of the advocate in the life of Paul, which is what each and every one of us is called to be in the life of those around us, to be each other's advocates. When somebody cannot speak for themselves, the advocate, in other words, the lawyer, that's the word. In fact, in Polish, the word for lawyer is advokat. Okay. The advocate speaks for them, becomes their lawyer. My grandfather was lost. He couldn't advocate for himself. So my grandmother advocated for him. In other words, she spoke on his behalf. She became a Barnabas in his life. She prayed for him. She loved him. Everybody talked bad about him and would tell her, how could you remain with him? He was an alcoholic, did horrible things to her. I won't recount many of the things that happened. How could you stay with him? You have that in your life too, right? How, how come you don't dump your kids, right? Look at all the things they've done. Why don't you dump this person or that? You should leave him! Isn't that what people hear all the time? Huh? And yet you are called to be a Barnabas. And the fruits of my grandmother's perseverance and persistence paid off. And she was only able to do this in her life, being married to him for 44 years, because she was connected to the vine as a branch. Her strength came from her faith. Where does your strength come from? So she was able to endure and hope against all hope. And at the end of his life, in eight months, she prayed for him for 44 years. At the end of his life, he was diagnosed with colon cancer. And this atheist, this unbeliever,
after the Tuesday when he was diagnosed with his colon cancer, the following Sunday, he's all dressed up and he says, I'm going to church with you today. And he turned his life around and died in peace because she prayed for him. She didn't give up on him. We all need a Barnabas in our life. Somebody to have our back. I've got your back. Because I'm praying for you, I'm advocating for you, and I can feel that you have my back as well. You know, we're all in this together, we're walking together. The gospel is good news, not good advice. See, your issue a lot of times in your life is that you yap. Huh? You think you're going to change people by what you say. Ah, ah, ah. Zip it. Stop it. Become the good news, not good advice. And stop being worried about your kids who don't go to church or who don't pray or your spouse. Stop it. Your job is to make sure that they are connected to you. You are the body of Christ. You are Jesus, His body. So as long as your kids, your family members, your spouse is connected to you, they are connected to Jesus when they are disconnected from you because of your bad attitude and the advice, and your rigidity, they become disconnected from Jesus. And we are very good at disconnecting, disconnecting people in the church from Jesus with rules and regulations. Oh, you can't... Did, 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 did. Huh? Our job is to keep people connected. And as long as they are connected, huh? they are connected to Jesus. And... The God, the Bible says, who begins the good work in people like he will today in the life of the baby that we will baptize. You know, they can probably say they don't go to church every week. <laughs> you know? Yes, most of the 99.9% .9 of the people that I baptize, okay, that I give first communions to, that I confirm, you know, <laughs> or that I marry. I mean, I, I witness their marriage, okay? You know, <laughs> all right? They don't go, but they're connected. This is their connection. And the God who begins the good work in us brings it to fulfillment, huh? brings it to fulfillment. That's hope. So as long as your kids and everybody in your life is connected to you, they're going to be okay. Do you understand that? Otherwise, where's your faith? You got to become a Barnabas in the life of your people. One of the life-changing messages that I keep remembering Every day is from a, my dear uh, friend, close friend. You all know her because she comes here all the time. Corinne, you, Corinne Bing. Uh, 
they're all nodding their heads, Corinne, because I know she's watching right now. Okay. Uh, and one of the things she said to me once was, she says, you know, I've got your back. And I keep remembering that all the time. So she's a Barnabas in my life. When I think of an advocate of my lawyer, I think of Corinne. And I could go on and name others. My grandmother, for my grandfather, was his Barnabas. And that's what saved him. We all need a sponsor. I see people right here who are in AA, right? Isn't that, uh, I'm not going to say who, okay? You know, lots of people. Um, and in other, other groups, other 12-step programs. Isn't the sponsor, don't they make a big difference? It's a key, isn't it? They keep tabs on you. They're there for you. We all need that. Are you a sponsor for your children? For your spouse? The sponsor is there for you. Not there to tell you. But to be there for you. That's what God is in our life. And that's what we are called to be for each other. To be each other's advocates, Barnabases. Paul would not have been allowed to be part of the community if it wasn't for Barnabas. My grandfather would have never made it to heaven if it wasn't for my grandmother. Hmm? You may be the only Bible the people in your life will ever read. What are they reading? Hmm? Harshness, judgment, criticism, rules. Father, you should tell them, you know. I hear that all the time. How come you don't, you know, tell people how they're supposed to do this, 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 and that, you know? Li go through the list of all the rules and regulations. Why don't you do that? Because I don't believe people are stupid. I believe all of you are very intelligent people. Mm -hmm. You're here. That's a... And you're watching. It means you're very smart. Could be watching Judge Judy. <laughs> 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 or some other divisive things, but you're, you're tuning in. You're very smart people, and you know what you have to do because we all have a conscience inside of us. My grandfather knew that he wasn't leading the correct life. He knew it. He just was lost. He was lost for all those decades of his life believing that money, tractors, that's why he joined the Communist Party. He joined in order to get a tractor, and then they indoctrinated him, you know. He was lost. But through my grandmother, he became found. That's in your life as well. Who have been the Barnabases in your life? Hmm? And are you a Barnabas? Because we're all, all of us, I mean, you're here this morning, which means you are connected to the vine. You, if you were disconnected, you wouldn't be here. Huh? as Barnabas was connected. And through him, 
Paul became connected. Reread the first reading. Some of you are probably hearing this for the first time. You should be, re -re you, you should be reading the readings before you come to church. This shouldn't be the first time you're hearing them. I'm, just, I'm, I'm supposed to be explaining them to all of you. But it shouldn't be the first time we hear the readings. The second reading. Children! You didn't hear it because you were asleep and then you didn't read it before you came to Mass. Okay? Or you might have been thinking about breakfast or, oh, it's so early in the morning. I wish Mass was at, you know, 10. Right now there's people complaining because uh, I got a few complaints. Uh, it's interesting, you know, because the schedule that I will have starting on Memorial Day weekend will be uh, 9 a.m. here, 11 a.m. in Middletown, and then I have to change the Spanish Mass to 1 p.m. because I can't, I just can't. You all know that, okay? I mean, and somebody called me and said, Father, why don't you just do a quickie? <laughs> <laughs> Calling Mass, Holy Mass, a quickie. I said, no wonder you have marital problems. <laughs> it's mass is a celebration. It's, you know, us coming together. I don't, I can't do you know, one, two, three, and go. We're all here to celebrate. I always like to say, you know, Mass, if, if Mass is an obligation for you, I feel sorry for you. If you're here because it's your Sunday obligation, I really feel sorry for you. What a shallow faith. How sad. Mass is supposed to be a celebration, not an obligation. I'm here to celebrate with my brothers and sisters, with all those here. And we're trying to love one another. And the letter of St. John says, Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Did you hear that? It's one thing if I say, Oh, I love you all so very much. Okay. But I have to show it. Hmm? Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God. That's what I told you about your conscience, okay? God speaks to you. You know if you're doing right or wrong. And so do your kids, so do your family members. That's why you don't have to be on top of them. Huh? We all have a voice inside of us telling us if we're doing right or wrong. And his commandment is this, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. And remain in Him. Love one another. Not just in words, but more so in our deeds. And so we have our baptism.